Hello, it's Mark from Excel Off The Grid here. In this video, we're looking at how we can save down multiple PDFs by looping through cells on a worksheet. So you can download the example file, and there are links in the descriptions box below. Then you'll be able to work along with this video. So once you've done that, if you're ready, let's get started. Okay, so here we are inside Excel, and what we have is a student exam record report. So all that happens on here is that we have this data validation list, and as we select items from that data validation list, that report then updates for the student that has been selected. This data validation list is based upon these student IDs which are contained here. So if I click on that cell and go to data validation, you can see that it's a list based on cell I4, which is that cell up there. Now for this, I have used uh, the unique function. Also in this report, I have used the filter function and I've also used the X lookup functions, which means if you don't have a dynamic array enabled version of Excel, so Excel 2019 and before, then this report won't work for you. However, we're not really focusing on the functions that we're using. We're focusing on how we save down those PDFs using a macro. And the macro is not dependent on any dynamic array functionality. So even if this main report doesn't work, you can still work along with the example, just using some of your own data. Now each of these student uh, reports come from data that's based on this data report where we have student ID, first name, last name, exam, score, and classification. Finally, on here we have a shape that's called save PDFs. We will assign our macro to this shape so that each time we want to save down these PDFs, we can simply click that button and it will run the macro for us. So that's our scenario. Now let's head over and look at our macro. To open up the Visual Basic editor, you can come to the Developer ribbon and then click Visual Basic if you have the Developer ribbon enabled. If not, you can just press Alt and F11 and that will open up the Visual Basic editor. Here we have my uh, project here, my workbook. I'm just gonna right click on there and go to Insert and select a module. And this will be the module that we use for our macro. So let's start coding it now. Sub, and I'm gonna call it save PDF from list. Okay, the first thing we need to do is to declare our variables. And the first variable that we want is, the, is for the worksheet. So I'll go dim ws as worksheet. And further down, I'm then gonna determine what that worksheet is. So w set, because it's an object, ws equals the active workbook dot sheets, and it'll be the report, and the sheet's called report on my example workbook. And that's how we reference the report sheet. The next item we need to declare is the range where that student ID is. So that's the one that when we change that value, it automatically updates the rest of that report. So I'm gonna dim, and call it RNG ID as range. Again, because this is an object, I'm gonna say set RNG ID, and that will equal my worksheet because it's on my report tab, and it's range, and it's in cell G4. Let's just take a look at that. It's that cell there, cell G4. Next, we want to reference our start point for our list. So dim RNG list start. And that'll be as range as well. So my list start is here in cell I4. Reference start of the student list. So again, this is an object, so it'll be set RNG list start equals WS dot range cell I4. 
Now let's create the file path that we want to use for each of our PDFs. So again, we need another variable. So dim PDF file path, and that'll be a string. Reference the PDF file path. PDF file path equals, now I've already got a folder set up, and that's this one here, so C test folder PDF export. And let's say we want to call each of our PDFs that we've saved down as student report. We then want, say, the student ID to pull through, and it should be .pdf. Next, we need to count the number of rows that we have within our list. So I'm going to call this dim rows count. As I made that long, just in case there's an exceptionally large number of PDFs that we will be using. So uh, count the number of student IDs. So row count equals the RNG list start. So this item up here, dot, and I want to take the current region. So however many cells there are in that area, dot rows, dot count. So what that will do is start a cell I4 and then look at all of the cells that are in um, that contiguous range. So that does also include the header row, which means, I, which means we will just minus one from that, so minus one. Right, it's now time for us to create our loop. For that, I'm going to create another variable that's just called i, that just helps us as a counter, so i as long. So for i equals one, to rows count. So this will keep looping from number one all the way up to the number of rows that we have. Uh, this item I have misnamed it should be rows count. And then, then at the end, because it's a four, we need to go next I, so it then loops to the next number. So we'll start with number one. Once it's finished that process, it'll then loop, come to next I, go to number two, next I, go to number three, until we get to that total rows count number. So let's start here in this loop by changing the cell value. Change the current student ID. So that's RNG ID dot value equals RNG list start dot offset. How many rows do we want to offset? Well, it's, it's the I, so it's the counter. So we want to offset by one and the next time offset by two. But because our first item is in that first cell, we just need to minus one. We don't want to offset by any columns, so that's zero, and then dot value. So each time we loop through, that will change that cell value, that cell G4. Next, we want to find a way of replacing the letters ID with the student ID that we're actually using for each of our loops. For this, I'll just create a new variable. So we've got temp, PDF file path as string to replace ID with the current student ID. So you can say that temp PDF file path equals the replace, and we want to replace the PDF file path. We're replacing ID with our RNG ID dot value. So we're going to replace that with the value that's in the cell. So all that means is that each time it saves a file, it's going to save it in C, test folder, PDF export, student report, and then it's going to replace each time that ID with our student ID number. So it creates a unique reference for each of our PDFs. Finally, we now need to export or create the PDFs. So for this, we're going to go to ws.export as fixed format. The type, it lists them there, so we can have type XL type PDF or XL type XPS. 
curlon equals on Excel type PDF, comma, and then we need to declare the file name. My file name is going to be my temp PDF file path. Right, let's lose that line there. Now let's just make this a little bit more efficient. So we want to stop the screen updating during running. So application.screenUpdating equals false. Then we'll turn the screen updating back on at the end. So restart screen updating equals true. Okay, let's see if this will now run. Let's assign it to our button. So assign macro, save from PDF list, okay. I've got my folder here. Let's click the button and see what happens, shall we? Oh, there we go, I've got a named item that's not valid. File, file, that wasn't the argument, was it? File name, you can see it there, file name. So stop that macro and rerun it. Oh, it's run quite quickly. Come back to our folder. There we go, we now have PDF saved for each of our individual students. It only took probably a second to save eight of those. So if you've got a lot, if you've got tens, hundreds even, then it should only take a few seconds to create all of those PDF reports for us. There are so many circumstances where you could use this type of approach, so you will need to adapt this code to your specific scenario. And the bits of code that you really want to look at changing are here, where we define what the report is, here, where we define what that cell is that we change that then uh, drives the rest of the report, this cell here, where we define where that list starts, and also where our PDF file should be saved. And I've used ID down here, and then, that, and then I've also used ID here, so those should be the same pieces of text. And then here in this bit where we create our temp PDF file path, we then say what we want to change that ID code with. So we've used the, um, the ID value, we could have equally used the student name or some other kind of information. That's it from me. Hopefully you found this video useful and you'll be able to put it to good use. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like and comment and I'll catch you next time.